Hi, welcome to this uh, short video uh, just describing some of my uh, experiences on trying to build a looper board. Now, I'm not a guy who has an experienced looper. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I like to just simply play a bit of guitar, acoustic, electric, whatever, and uh, uh, sing. And of course, eventually you get to wanting to thicken out your sound and just have a bit of variety, be able to play some different things uh, so that you can play, you know, maybe a couple of guitar parts at the same time. So I decided to get into looping. This uh, on the, the second picture here is the looper I bought. I went for an intermediate looper, the Boss Loop Station RC500. Um, seemed like a great idea um, because I thought if I buy a basic one, they're still quite expensive. Uh, but I thought I would outgrow it very quickly and not be able to, uh, you know, to, to use the same features I'd learned to begin to do more with it. So this uh, intermediate looper, uh, honestly, if you're not an experienced looper, um, it's pretty complex. Even the reviews, uh, I now realise retrospectively, admit this. It's got an awful lot of uh, hidden functions. Each of the, each of these buttons here produces a whole set of options that this rotary encoder here will let you work through. I'm not going to go into them, but you know they they do everything from you know, whether you've got a start, uh, you know, a count in, or whether you've got a straight in, whether you've got your preset, you know, um, quantization, whether you've got, you know, so many uh, bars or, or um, counts in your recording, or whether it's a free recording based on your first one. Honestly, I'm just giving you a flavor. There are literally, when you download the PDF list of what all of the hidden functions are, we're talking one 100 plus different functions you can control. It's also a two channel looper, which is a, uh, one of the things that attracted me, it lets you uh, it lets you record onto two tracks, and theoretically, although I haven't actually advanced to this yet, perhaps put a chorus onto one track, and uh, maybe put uh, you know your your verse or main structure onto the rest, and then you know mixing either free playing when you just take the looper out completely, or you're choosing between track one and two. You can then you know go between a verse and a chorus structure, or you can have a just a thickened uh, structure of your layers, uh, and have one of the the sounds on that layer, uh, on the second track, so that you can take that in and out as you uh, as you want to you know reduce the emphasis perhaps on a particular sound. All of this is great. However, it then set me a set of challenges. First of all, I thought it's simple. It's a battery looper. Turns out it eats batteries. Uh, one session and your batteries are pretty close to dead. So four AA batteries at a time, no. So I had promised I would never, uh, not never, that sounds too dramatic. I, I promised myself I wasn't going to build another pedal board. I sold my last one because I got a, a, an MX5, what's it called? A Headrush MX5 all-in-one multi-effect modeler. And I really love it. It's fabulous. It's physically a little bit big here. Um, uh, so I was using it for a wee while. Uh, sorry, what I'm trying to say is it's physically a bit big to put on this board. I was using it for a while with the looper, for a short while, and the, the MX-5 next to it. And then we added on any other little uh, pedals, for example, an octaver to give you a, a bass sound. It all became a bit of a mess and I needed a power supply for it. So I bought a board, uh, a pedal board off of uh, Amazon, a Gokko. They come in two sizes, brilliant, good internal routing on it, comes with a bag, pretty cheap for what it is, way, way cheaper than a pedal train, uh, which I used to have, and I think it's as good or better probably. So, so I've got a pedal board then, I've got my looper on it, and I start thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could get a few different sounds? I could put an octaver on so that I can get a bass sound. I could put a synth on because some of the guitar synths now uh, are pedal form. They're not as high tech as the old days when you used to have to use MIDI. I tried that and it became a mess, so complex. And uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, hex pickup and all that on your guitar. Pedals like these two, this one here is a Boss SY200, a little analog type synth, which basically just modifies the waveform of your guitar. How it does it, I'm not absolutely sure, but it means that you get it in real time. You play and you get an instant response with the waveform modified. This one is an electroharmonics one, Key 9. It only does electric piano and uh, organ -y vibe kind of sounds. It's pretty niche, pretty narrow, but it really does a nice job within limits. So that's great, that's something I wanted to use. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to be able to get decent guitar sounds. 
all on the one board. Now that gave me a problem when I tried to put my, my MX-5 on. It was that kind of size. It was really thick. And this comes to my first piece of advice for you. Uh, when you want to build a pedal board like this, you need to find a multi-effects unit you can put on the board. And the MX-5 uh, is not untypical in that it takes a reasonably large amount of power. It comes with its own power supply. I think it was about a 3 amp power supply. I'm sure it doesn't actually use 3 amps, but uh, but it doesn't use the standard 500 or 750 or, uh, or even uh, 1 amp that, that most pedals uh, have as a stated limit. So I went for this. This is the Ampero Mini, the, the Hotone. Uh, and although the reviews uh, don't you know, don't cover it as being the best thing since sliced bread, it's reasonably inexpensive. It's very easy to operate. It's got a touch screen of a good size. So, for example, when I'm in, I'm not going to be doing a review on this then, like that, not unless anyone wants it. There's plenty out there. But if I want to change the sound here, I've got a wee external foot switch on it to get a bit of dirt, but. If I want to change the sound, I just hit edit, and although you probably can't see that in detail, you can see that I've got a screen with little squares. So let's say I wanted to change the um, the 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 cab that I'm using. So you just go into edit, and I've got lots of options. It's a black face twin Fender emulated two by twelve. Let's see what happens. That same thing if I go for a Fender basement four by ten, and uh, let's see how that sounds. You get the point. Really easy to do. I'll just hit back without saving that. When you do save it, it gives you a little keyboard. You can put the name in. It's great. Do I think this is the best multi-effects? No. Do I think it's better than my um, my uh, Hairdrush MX-5? No. Do I think it's good enough? Ah, oh, very much so. This is a decent sounding effect. It will give everything from clean sounds to dirty sounds reasonably well. I don't care if it's not the best one. You get John Mayer to play through this and you're not going to be asking questions. It's a decent multi-effects. But why my excitement? Well, it's small and it runs from a 500 milliamp power supply, which is the standard one that my little power unit that's built in, the little, you know, um, the distribution brick that's built into my pedal board now underneath, which was a, a, a fairly inexpensive one off Amazon again. Um, it will run this. So I don't need special power supplies. I don't need a second um, power lead coming out of this to power the, you know, the, the specialist guitar thing. So the last thing I want to say then is I've got a multi-effect that gets me uh, an ability to... And I've got synths that will let me give uh, synth sounds. For example, that gives me the challenge of mixing them. Now, there's a couple of things here that that I need to moan about. I know that that's the only reason you tune in. You want to hear uh, someone on YouTube moaning because you've got nothing better to do with your time, I imagine. But I think I've got a serious moan. If there's one person watching this from a pedal board company, please, can you, can you take note of this? I want not, sorry, I'm going to try that another way. I'm not Angus Young uh, in ACDC. Obviously, that would be good fun. I wish I was. If I had a pedal that was too noisy, and I don't mean electronic noise, uh, I mean noisy, physically noisy, then that's not a problem. I can stomp on it like, uh, uh, <laughs> like, like it's going out of fashion, and it won't make any difference. No one's going to hear it. However, if I'm at home, as many of you will be, just doing a recording with my camera, a microphone, a little interface, and maybe a, a guitar um, uh, emulator interface going into that, then what I need, especially when I've got a vocal microphone that I might be singing into, is for my pedal not to do this. Because here is what happens when I press the pedal on my electroharmonics. Imagine a quiet acoustic guitar, my voice, gap in between. Is that audible? 
Yes, I know it's audible because lots of times I've tried to to uh, make a recording. I've used a, a, one of these uh, clicky pedals and they sound bloody awful. Whereas if I go to my boss unit and I turn it on or off, very minimal noise from it indeed. It doesn't click, it's just a touch to contact. So when, uh, when I explain why that's important, of course, you have to come to this part here. This part here is the switcher because to make it possible to do a loop that has got uh, a little bit of um, maybe synth on it, maybe a little bit of bass on it. Incidentally, I don't have an octaver on this board because the bass can come from, from either of my synths. It, it give you a bass-like sound. Um, the little reverb pedal here is simply because neither of the synths have got their own reverb. And uh, because it all gets mixed together in the looper, you need to add the reverb somewhere. So I've got one line, if you like, here on one side, which is the which is the, uh, the the synth side, and I've got the guitar side here, if you like. This pedal here is entirely movable. I actually just move this to the front. This controls my drum machine, which is built into the looper. And the second pedal I've got configured using one of the 1,500 odd options that you have to find in the hidden menus to simply take the snare in and out. Back in. And it just gives you a wee bit of variation if you're using the drum machine to play along with. So back to these two pathways. So what you do is you buy an AB switcher. I'm pointing at it just now. An AB switcher lets me choose between the guitar path, the synth path, or at any point if I press the right hand uh, foot switch, um, then I get both at once. Now in this case, these are Clicky, yes, but very quiet in the context of me recording, even with an acoustic guitar, and that being on the floor, not that distance from the microphone as it is I'm touching both at once here, um, then you're not hearing that. However, you need to be aware if you're going to do this, I'll just show you. Went to the wrong place. I already had this out ready. This is the first one I bought, uh, a little uh, cheap one from Mr. Fender's company. Um, and it's good, it's a uh, very heavy duty. It does A, B, it does A or B together, exactly what I want. Very inexpensive, uh, it does take a battery, but it's only to operate the LED to tell you which one's uh, chosen. It would still work without the battery. However, quiet passage in the song, you press this button and da 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 da. Oh my God, this is even worse, this one's like a gunshot. So you're not going to be doing quiet home recordings with atmosphere and mood and taste with this damn thing going. So I wasted my money on that because it's just ridiculously noisy. Who thinks that's okay? And I had to go for this one by KMA Machines, which is basically nice and quiet. So those are the big, uh, the big takeaway lessons for me on this. Um, noisy switches, hate them. Quiet switches are what we need. You need two pathways and the results of course would be something like this. Uh, here's one I did just a few minutes before hitting record. <laughs> and in this case there's a bass coming from the Boss SY200 synth. It's just a pad called Dark Bass 1 and then put in a little soft pad of the synth, uh, sorry orchestral pad it's called, it's more like a 1980s FM synth but if you listen you hear it, just thickens out the sound and then switching back to the guitar channel alone and just putting a wee bit of a, a modelled um, tube screamer on it and a nice little bit of echoey lead guitar. You can see how easy that is to do, and of course one thing about the Boss unit is it auto-synchronises uh, with the drum machine built in, and it gives you lots of nice wee variants. At any point when I'm playing it back, I can choose to drop my uh, snare drum. Just to take it down a little bit, and then maybe a chorus is starting so you can get your snare back in. So there we go, those are my takeaways, those are my 
lessons. There's nothing much there. Happy to answer any questions. Certainly don't see myself as any expert on it. I just thought I've learned enough about the sheer hassle of building a looper board to, to give you some options uh, uh, to share. You could replace the synth and you could make this a much simpler, smaller looper board by just simply getting like a little octaver pedal and that would let you put a bass sound down just like you hear the, the wonderful uh, guys do sometimes when they're demoing loopers on Anderton's TV. Uh, Danish Pete does a great job of that sometimes with a, an octaver pedal and that would save a lot of bother but this setup lets you get a bit of string pad in as well or some other uh, synth sounds. So, hope it's helpful. Um, this has been a... Um, a strange experience I have to say I kind of love what it lets me do but I don't find as much time as I thought I would to do it and I realise that the learning curve is steep on this and actually it's maybe stopped me just learning more songs so there's a bit of a balance however you don't care about that thanks for watching and uh, I'll answer any questions I can as long as they're not about level 17 subset 3 of the menus on the Boss RC 500 because that's beyond me thanks guys, bye